guys, welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again. The Sephora VIB sale is among us and it will go through April 11th. So it's going to be from Friday to a Monday for Rouge. And then there's going to be separate dates kind of staggered, whether you're a VIB or insider. So I will have all of that listed down below, but I'm very excited that I am actually partnering with Sephora to bring you um, this video today. And I'm going to be talking about my top 15 recommendations for the Sephora sale. Now, I typically talk about not only my recommendations, but also some of my wish list items. I decided this year I'm just going to talk about my recommendations and then I will do a haul showing what I got. So stay tuned in a few days. Hopefully, um, as long as shipping doesn't take too long, I'll be able to get that haul up during the sale in case you get any ideas from that video as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. I have tried to narrow this down to 15 items. I may sneak in an honorable, honorable mention. Some of these things I have talked about before. Some of them I may have hauled, but have not included them in a recommendation video because I hadn't used them enough. So let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to start with skincare and hair care. I just have three products that kind of fall into that category. The first skincare product is something that I've talked about quite a bit. In fact, this is in my cart. I will be purchasing another one and that will be my fourth tube. And that is the Super Goop Mineral Matte Screen SPF 40 foundation. This is the SPF that I have underneath my foundation today. I said foundation. I meant to say sunscreen. <laughs> it is the sunscreen I have underneath my foundation today, and it is all mineral comprised of titan titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. This has a moussey type formula, and it really applies to the skin in a almost primer-like fact fashion. It does have a little bit of a tint to it, but once you, you know, really rub it into the skin, it's not any kind of discernible coverage. So it's not going to be like something you can use in place of a tinted moisturizer. It doesn't work like that, at least not on me, but it does provide probably the smoothest finish of any sunscreen that I own. And being a matte screen, I do feel like it controls oils well. So if I'm using a super luminous foundation, it's going to work underneath that really well, but also it works under matte foundation. I have a matte foundation on today and it works perfectly well with that. I am going to be repurchasing this during the sale because even though I just opened this one, these tubes don't last that long for me. That's the only downside about them. And with summer coming up, I will be reaching for this particular SPF quite a bit. So highly recommend that. And then I have two hair items, one of which I've talked about before. The other one is... I think something I talked about in a wish list video, but I haven't recommended it yet. The first is the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo. Now, the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Dry Shampoo, I think is still my favorite. I do really like this one. This is supposed to have even more cleaning properties. It's supposed to clean the oils out of your hair even better than the original. I don't dislike this one by any means. It's just the only one I have right now. But I recommend this one and the original because they both work really well for my hair as far as actually cleaning the hair because I do only wash my hair twice a week. So I do rely on dry shampoos, especially that second and third day with dirty hair to kind of refresh everything. And this Living Proof, the Living Proof line in general is definitely my favorite. Now this I just used and the cap isn't even on it right. So I'll just take it off. This is the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray. And I feel like I talked about this in a wish list video, maybe last VIB sale. And I love this stuff. Not only does it smell fabulous, but it really does give nice texture. Now I tend to use this most when I have curly hair like today and I will just spray a little bit in and I'll take my hands and kind of judge it up and help texturize those pieces. And it just, it revives everything and again, adds that texture while also adding body and gives such a good smell. It's very tropical, like coconutty, beachy type smell. And I have really been enjoying this again, especially for when I have my hair in waves or curls. So that is the IGK Beach Club Volumizing Texture Spray. So let's get into 
some makeup. I did not go through every single category. I don't think I have a single bronzer. I don't have a powder. Here's the thing. Any of my favorites videos, any of my playing when you make up videos that you can go back and look at. If I said I love it, I still love it. If it's available at Sephora, it's a great opportunity to get your 20% off if you're a rouge or 15 or 10. But these are just the things that I maybe haven't talked about as much. Some of them I have, which just goes to show you how much I absolutely adore them or that I have obtained since the last sale that I really want to focus on. So I do definitely have foundation as a category because that is my favorite. And this is kind of where a little cheat honorable mention is going to come in because the one I have on today is definitely something that I recommend, but I've talked about it a lot. It's the NARS Soft Matte Complete Foundation. I love this. Even if you have normal to dry skin, if you use this appropriately, which I will be doing a video including this, hopefully coming up in the next week or so, showing you how I feel is best to use it, especially if you do have more normal to dry skin, it is going to last you all day long and leave a very flawless finish. I do feel like there's a tad bit of a learning curve, but once you figure that out, it's absolutely gorgeous. One of my favorite mixing foundations cannot be beat. Another one that is a favorite mixing foundation of mine and that I have had in my collection on and off for years is the Lancome Taunt It All Ultra Wear. I included this in my favorite top three base combination video that I put up a few months ago because it is another one that never fails me. All three of the ones I'm recommending today don't fail me or I wouldn't be recommending them. They stay on all day long. This one is technically a more matte foundation, but I don't find it as matte as the NARS. It is more of a demi matte in my opinion. And I do find that it's gonna work for pretty much all skin types. Now, if you are visibly flaking, maybe it's not gonna be the best. But other than that, I feel like it really works for a wide range of skin types and it lasts forever. It's another good mixing foundation. It's flawless every time. The NARS, I don't find oxidizes on me. This one does slightly. So, you know, keep that in mind when choosing a shade, but it is an absolutely gorgeous foundation. I feel like I always get compliments on my skin and my makeup when I wear this. And then finally, this is the newest foundation out of all those three in my collection, but definitely Definitely one I could not go without recommending, and it is the Cali Ray Free Dreaming Foundation. This is actually called a Skin Wellness Diffusing Tint. I will put all of my shades down below if I haven't mentioned them already, but I am in shade six. In this, I have a whole separate video where I show me applying this, how it looks on the skin. It Again, it lasts all day. It's so it is a diffusing, blurring tint, but it has more coverage than what you would typically probably think a tint has. It's a solid medium coverage on me. Again, it lasts all day. It's absolutely beautiful. I've had so many people DM me on Instagram since I posted that video telling me they got it and they absolutely love it. So definitely one worth trying out. All right, I'm kind of going in order. Let's talk about under eyes. I have two products that I recommend for this. One of them is like, I've talked about it ad nauseum. So really, I probably just need to shut up about it, but I just can't. And one of them is newer since the last sale. And this is the Bobbi Brown Corrector Stick. So, you know, Bobbi Brown had their correctors in the little compacts, tiny little pot compacts for years and years. And they were very, very well known for them. Comes in many colors always worked well. It was in their Universal Pro palette. Just, I feel like if you knew about Bobbi Brown, you knew about their correctors. Well, they have since put them in stick form, which I really like. And if you can, I don't know if you can see how far down that is. That's how much I have used of this product. But this is in the shade Bisque, and it is just their corrector in a stick form. Now, I do find it's not as emollient as the one that came in the compact because it does need to be in this form. So I feel like it needs to be a little bit less emollient, but nonetheless, it works just as well as the other. This is Bis, so it has that nice peachy undertone and it really helps to correct the darkness under my eyes. It wears just perfectly, in my opinion, under every concealer that I have worn it with, which is pretty much every concealer that I have in constant rotation because I have been using this so much. I don't want anybody to think because it's in a stick, it's too drying. I don't find that to be the case at all. I don't feel like it dries out my under eyes, but it's also, again, not too emollient. So to me, it's the perfect combination of both worlds. So definitely check that out. Again, they have multiple colors, so I feel like you're going to be able to find one that works for you.
The only other skin products that I have to talk about is one that I have recommended before, and it is, you know, a little bit pricey, so I did want to include it in this video, but it is my favorite cream to powder highlight, and it's from Lila B. This is the Glisten and Glow Skin Illuminator in the shade, I don't know, doesn't say it on here. I think it's Be Enchanting. There's two shades. This is a lighter shade, but I also have the darker shade and it works well too. So this is the full size. I have the darker shade in a smaller size. It is the coolest formula because I do feel like, yeah, I'm putting my finger in cream, but I'm also putting in powder. It dries down to a powder finish. It is so beautiful on the skin. I don't have it on today but you've seen it. I mean, you can search my channel for this particular product and all the videos where I use it comes up, but it's just so beautiful. It absolutely leaves no visible sparkle or shimmer or glitter on the skin. It is just a beautiful sheen. This is something that could be worn with or without makeup. If you just had sunscreen on and wanted to pat a little bit of this on top of it on the high points to give you a little bit of a glow, totally works that way too. Works really well patting it over powders. There's not really a situation where I have found this doesn't work. It's even really pretty on the eyes if you want to use it as a cream shadow. So definitely look into this. I do think they might sell it in a mini size. I don't know if it's in stock, but I mean, I recommend the full size because it's just so good. All right, let's talk about some eyeshadows. I do have three different eyeshadow palettes that I want to recommend. A couple I have done so in the past, you know, in these Sephora recommendations videos, but I have to talk about the Dior Quince. I know that I talk about them a lot. I have a very large selection of these in my collection and I absolutely love them. I have this one on today in combination with another palette I'm going to talk about, but this is in Mitza and it's such a beautiful like burgundy gold copper combination of colors. If you have blue eyes, I highly recommend Mitza. I think the color selection is perfect to really make that eye color pop, but it also looks great on brown and green. Love Mitza. And again, that's what I have on. And then I just pulled out another one that I really like, and this is Nude Dress. So it's definitely more soft in tone than the Mitza and really very neutral. And it's just a nice companion palette for other palettes in your collection but it can also be used on its own to create its own look. One that I don't have that is on my wish list is Soft Cashmere, I believe. So I'm probably going to be picking that up as well because again, I really like the formula of the Dior Quints and I just like the different color combinations. I feel like there's a wide variety and you're not really getting any repeats in colors across the palettes, which is also really important, especially when there's only five colors and they do tend to have a higher price point because they are Dior. Another higher price point quad, not quint, that I have to recommend because it is so good. And I talked about this in a recent favorites. This is the newer um, eye color cream quad from Todd Ford. And this is in Smoky Quartz. And I don't know if you can see the amount that I have used in this, but especially this color has a very large dent in it. I love this palette. This formula exceeds the other Tom Ford matte formulas. This one is all matte. In my opinion, it far exceeds that. This and the wet dry formula are my favorite formula when it comes to Tom Ford quads. So highly recommend this. I haven't tried the other two options. They are very pretty. I think they might be a little too redundant as far as shades go in my collection. So I don't know that I'll be picking them up, but this one is being all matte is something that I feel like is just a staple in anyone's collection. I'm not saying you don't have these colors already, but I can pretty much assure you don't have this exact formula. It's very unique to my collection. And again, this is just one of those palettes that I can stick in my makeup bag traveling or, you know, out and about for touch-ups if I needed to. And it's, it's all in one. It's all purpose. It's versatile. It's fabulous. Now, if you're wanting something a little bit bigger in shade selection and you want an actual eyeshadow palette, this is definitely not new, but it is something that I picked up in the last sale and can't recommend enough. Um, it is the one that I have underneath my eye and in my crease in combination with the Dior Mitza, and it is the Natasha Denona Biba palette. 
This is an investment, which is why it's so good to be able to get your percentage off. It's why I took advantage of it during the last sale. But I'm telling you, this is, especially if you're someone who does not like to have a ton of palettes in their collection, this is one to have. It is one to invest in and know that you will have it until you have completely hit pan on every color and you really don't need much more. It's just the perfect neutral palette in my opinion. It's got mattes, it's got shimmers, it's got kind of similar to the Tom Ford, that like cream powder formula, especially in this um, spot, which is one of my favorite eyeliner shades ever because it has that creamy texture. There's not a shade in here that I haven't used and loved. It's very versatile. Even though it all looks pretty neutral, you can get so many different looks out of this. And it's just, again, a staple in everybody's collection, I feel like. And it is an investment, so definitely take advantage of the percentage off. But I love this palette so much. All right, we're winding down. I only have a few more products to recommend. We're gonna talk about lips, and I'm gonna talk about the lipstick that I have on right now. This is from Giorgio Armani, and it is their Lip Power lipsticks. So the one that I, I actually have on both of these. Okay. So I put on number 102, which is one of my favorite nude shades ever. Pretty much. I have used a very large dent in this. That is 102. See how it has like, like shine to it. So pretty. And then right before I turn the camera on, I put a little bit of 500 which is still nude, but it is definitely more pink, which you will be able to see in the swatches. So I put just a little bit of the 500 on top and they both have that sheen to them. They're long lasting for being a lipstick with a sheen. And I don't find I need to top these with a gloss, which is not necessarily the case for many of my lipsticks. Um, I might have one or two other formulas in my collection where I don't feel like I need to top it with a gloss, but I am a gloss girl and I love the shiny effect. I need that kind of extra moisture on my lips. I almost always top with a gloss. With these, I don't feel like I need to. They have quite the color selection, so if you're not a fan of nudes like I apparently am, they definitely have darker and brighter colors to choose from. But those are two of my favorites and I might very well be looking into some other colors myself during the sale. And then speaking of gloss, I wanted to talk about one of my favorite gloss slash lip oil formulas. I only have a mini right now, but I have gone through a couple of the larger sizes. And this is also from Lila B. And it is their tinted lip oil. And this is in the shade B Romantic, which is one of my favorite shades. And okay, you're going to be able to see it's a lip oil, but it's very opaque for what it is. It does have quite a bit of color to it. So it's right there. Armani has almost as much shine as the lip oil. So you can see, but it's such a pretty color. Very, very comfortable on the lips. They do have, uh, you know, again, different colors to choose from, but I think the Be Romantic is my favorite. It's that really pretty nice, like pop of milky pink. And it's just so gorgeous and very comfortable. So I wanted to offer you a lipstick and a kind of gloss oil option. And these are definitely some of my favorites right now. And then finally, I'm going to talk about a couple of fragrances. I'm going to try not to repeat some of the ones I've talked about in the past. Of course, definitely take advantage of the percentage off for any Tom Ford fragrance that you have been loving. Lost Cherry and Tobacco Vanille are my favorite. I really love Bitter Peach as well. Those are very expensive. So the discount comes out to be a very hefty amount off. So definitely something to look into. But I have two here that I don't think I've mentioned before, one of which is something that I hauled in one of the last two VIB sales. But the first one I'm going to talk about is from Guerlain, and this is their Aqua Allegoria in Coconut Fizz. Now, I wanted to talk about this not only because I love it, but also because it's coming up on that season, the spring and summer season where you know, a lot of people are looking for more beachy type scents, more fresh and fruity scents to go along with the season. And this could not be more up that alley. And the Aqua Allegoria are Eau de Toilettes. So the lasting power is not going to be as long as an Eau de Parfum. That's par for the course for most Eau de Toilettes. But I don't find that it goes away like in an hour. It's definitely not like a body spray. It lasts longer than that. The key notes are coconut water, watermelon, and sandalwood. Oh, it's just, this is one of the most refreshing scents that I have in my collection. And I guess I didn't know that watermelon was in there, but I can kind of smell it now. 
but I definitely get the coconut. The dry down has a little bit of that creamy sandalwood in it, but it's just so refreshing. So if you like something that you can really overspray, it's gonna last longer than a body spray. Very, very appropriate for the upcoming season. Definitely look into the Aqua Allegorias. And again, my favorite is Coconut Fizz. And then the other perfume that I wanted to recommend is actually one that I did not think I was gonna like. This is from Replica. Replica makes some of my favorite perfumes. One of my favorite scents of all time, Lipstick On, was actually discontinued from Replica, which is extremely upsetting. I love Jazz Club. I love By the Fireplace. I wanted to try this one. I only got it in the travel spray because I honestly did not know if I would like it. This is Coffee Break. And when I first heard that they were coming out with a Coffee Break, I was like, oh, just sign me up. Anything coffee, I'm going to want. I'm going to tell you right now, it does not smell anything like coffee in my opinion. And when I started hearing those reviews and seeing those reviews and seeing that it was heavy on the lavender, I was very reluctant to purchase it because I'm not a fan of lavender. Even when I first got it, I'm like, mm, I don't know, but it grew on me fairly quickly. The first time I wore it, I kept getting wafts of the scent throughout the day. And I was like, oh wow, I think I actually really like this. It says it's warm and spicy. I don't really see that. I feel like it's more comforting and soapy almost. It says it has a coffee accord in it. Again, I do not get that at all. Lavender and milk mousse accord. I don't get a heavy dose of lavender. It's not like a fresh cut lavender at all. It's not enough for me not to like it, obviously. And it only needs a tiny bit of lavender for me not to like it. So I don't get that kind of lavender, but I do get the like milky lactonic aspect of this fragrance. And I think that is what sold it for me because it's just in, extremely comforting. This is one that I could totally see if you like to wear scents to bed, this would be like one to do that. It just reminds me of like maybe a coffee shop without the coffee scent, if that makes sense. It's very hard to explain, but I had to talk about it because again, it's one that I know I even mentioned not knowing if I was going to like, and it has totally stolen my heart. I really, really enjoy this scent and it is very unique in my collection, which says a lot because as I'm looking at my, um, like bookcase of fragrances over here. I have well over probably 75 bottles and this is still unique. So definitely one to look into. Really any of the replica scents, if it's along the lines of what you like, I recommend because they are a bit expensive. The discount's definitely gonna help, but they're great fragrances. So that wraps it up. That is my top 15, maybe 16, recommendations for the upcoming sale. I said upcoming. It's actually here. So hopefully you enjoy this. If you are interested in anything I talked about, I have it listed in the link down below. I do use affiliate links, so it helps me out greatly. If you choose to use them, I appreciate it. And let me know what you are picking up during the sale, what you are most excited about. And again, stay tuned because I will be doing my haul shortly to let you know what I decided to pick up from Sephora this go around. So let me know if you have any questions, be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. I hope you're all staying happy, healthy, safe, and sane. And then most of all, you go out and have a very blessed day.